Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and today we have the special guest, Dirk the Libby of Cinnablend on here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, sir. Oh, Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining and responding to my Twitter uh, DM. Look at that. I didn't think people with check marks responded to Twitter DMs. <laughs> You know, I the the check mark is the weirdest thing. I don't like. I just sort of did like, and I I got rejected the first time I applied, but mm -hmm. then I got accepted the second time a couple of months later. I don't really know why I have it. Like, <laughs> I mean, I have a decent number of followers, but not a crazy number of followers. I have like, I have a, I am sort of public because I write about stuff, but mm -hmm. like. I was a little bit shocked that I I got that, and it's just it's weird. How long did it take to um the applicant like you apply, but it takes like what thirty days for them to review it? Well, it it, it was weird because like the yeah the first time I applied and like I got a response back I don't know a couple of weeks later, mm -hmm. um and I got rejected the second time I applied and yeah it took a little bit of time. Other people I know who I've talked to like some of my coworkers who are still getting rejected they get rejected like almost instantaneously now oh wow. it's like you submit it and they kick it back five minutes later like sorry um <laughs> so i don't know what like it's it's a weird crazy black box i don't know how it works yeah that's so interesting so what made you apply like what made you apply in the first place and what made you apply again um, oh, well, I mean, I just, I, I thought it would be cool to be verified. Yeah. And I mean, I, like, I'm mean, like, oh, I was like, well, you know, I, I have a, I am a, I'm a journalist. Technically, I don't like to use that word because mm -hmm. I like, I, I'm a writer. I'm mm -hmm. not a journalist. I mean, I try to be a journalist as best I can, but mm -hmm. there's other people who earned that title and I have not. <laughs> um, but I was like, you know, I mean, technically I qualify under Twitter's rules to be verified. So sure, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I was not shocked at all when I got rejected the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and like, basically what I did was, cause they give you a couple of different ways to, uh, to submit yourself. There's like, you can, you know, you, you can send us articles with your byline or you can do this other thing. And so like, I, I did the, I tried the one way the first time and I just tried the other way the second time, like just to see if I got a different response. And I mm -hmm. did. Um, what was the second one? The articles or the, I, yeah, I mean, I, th I think I used the byline the first time I used What's my, the, my bio, bio page on the website, which has mm -hmm. a link to my Twitter. Like mm -hmm. that was what they wanted was like, mm -hmm. show us that you are actually working there and that that is your Twitter. And so I did that the first time. Mm -hmm. um, I also I also like I changed my email address. Like I was using my personal email address as mm -hmm. my Twitter default or previously, and I changed mm -hmm. it to my work email address. Ah. But like and like so the second time it worked. But then like I would tell my coworkers, "Here's what I did," and they would do that, and they still get rejected. So <laughs> so I don't know. I no idea. Every time I applied, I got rejected. So I. <laughs> You know, like I, I figure, you know, either like, you know, you know, keep trying every once in a while because apparently you can get rejected once and get a, get accepted the second time or third time or whatever. You know, how much time passed between like the first and the second time, would you say? Uh, a couple months. Oh, okay. Not bad. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try it again on like Monday or something. Yeah. Give it a shot. Give it a, yeah, you know, worst thing, that, worst thing that can happen is you get rejected again. Exactly. Um, and speaking of uh, journalism and writing, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? You work for uh, you write for Cinema Blend, right? Cinema, Cinema Blend. Cinema Blend. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a writer editor at CinemaBlend.com. Um, I cover, I mean, officially, I cover all forms of pop culture, entertainment, movies, TV. Um, but then, uh, you know, I I have sort of built uh, the the what we call the theme park beat at Cinema Blend over the last couple of years, um, just because it was an area that I, and I mean, I've, I've always loved theme parks. And so it was a thing I wanted to write about. And, you know, we started to find like when, you know, when like Galaxy's Edge was was getting rolling or Avengers Campus, you know, we would, we would write about theme park stuff when it connected to movies. 
Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and we would find that it, that it had an audience. People were interested. And I, I remember a couple of years ago, um, what I remember was the Disneyland Hotel that they didn't build. They were going to build mm -hmm. a fourth hotel in, in the middle of downtown Disney. Mm -hmm. And that deal fell apart. And one of those stories I wrote on the hotel did pretty well, just traffic wise. People read it and mm -hmm. it was like, oh, here's a theme park related story. that has nothing to do with anything other than the theme park, the mm -hmm. resort and people are interested. And that kind of, you know, so that opened the door and went, OK, we can do more of this. People will read it. You know, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, it's about getting the clicks. You know, if people aren't reading it, they're not going to let me write about it. But people yes. are reading it. So. And I've been able to build that uh, over the last couple of years and do more and more and write about stuff that, you know, doesn't have Disney or Universal's name on it. And I can write about, you know, SeaWorld trying to buy Cedar Fair and people will read that, too. And it's great. It allows, it allows me to do that, which just, you know, it's it's more fun to write when you are writing about stuff that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And definitely no, uh, no sense of writer's block there when you. Yeah, when you very, it. very rarely. Yeah. And what you call I was saying Oh yeah, so was it just you or did you start to like grow or like say talk to your coworkers and say, Hey look, this is doing pretty well. They wanna help me out here? You know, I'm I'm I you know, I'm I'm the only one that, that is sort of officially on the theme park beat, but you know, mm -hmm. anybody, you know, we, we write stories all the time and obviously I'm not working twenty four hours a day, so if an interesting story happens and somebody else is there, they're the mm -hmm. one writing it. Um I got a I got a, a buddy uh, another writer there, Mike Reyes, who's a big uh, theme park guy, and like so he'll 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 uh, he'll help me out when I when I need it, and and uh, you know, and there's I mean there's several other people I've got. I mean I have editors that are also big theme park people, which was one of the other reasons that I got the chance was, you know, I had editors that were interested enough to let me do it <laughs> um, <laughs> that allowed that, that allowed us to see that it would have the success so yeah there's a bunch of people at cinema blend who are theme park people oh. uh to one degree or another i am probably the most insane uh in that <laughs> regard but there's lots of people who enjoy theme parks wow and so do you guys still work, do you work in an office or do you do everything virtually uh we do everything virtually this is this is my office you are this is this is cinema blends sacramento office nice. uh, also known as my house <laughs> um yeah we uh are cinema blends actually owned by by uh future which is a, a company based in the uk oh. um so we are all uh we are all virtual all over the country we have folks everywhere um and uh yeah this is so but yeah this is this is where this is where my magic happens wow so do you ever have to travel to the uk for anything or just no the the cinema blend got bought during the during the pandemic so, ah. uh yeah no one has had to make you that trip. there is a there is a new york office i understand some people may have been there i have not Wow, interesting, interesting. Because actually, I, I always see uh, scrolling through Facebook. I always see cinema, cinema blend articles on just different things. Some theme parks actually, and so I've read some. But I was wondering, like, where are these? I always assumed every thing was just in Hollywood, but now you're just like all virtual. So it's very oh yeah, yeah. No, we definitely have we definitely have a bunch of folks in Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, that's where, like, you know, I've. Uh, you know, because I, I'm in Northern California, so I'm I'm a little bit further out. So like when we do get theme park opportunities to like actually visit the parks, I've been able to do some of that. But oftentimes it's like, oh, hey, um, you know, I'll send like we have people in L.A. So I'll send, you know, I'll send somebody else to cover Halloween Horror Nights at mm -hmm. Universal Hollywood or or whatever else, just because they're it's much easier to get them there than to get me there, which is very disappointing. Uh, yeah, I would, I would really love to do all those cool opportunities, but I, uh, I get, I get my chances. But at least, at least you have some places in Northern California. You go to a Great America, or um, was it the Six Flags? Part? Yeah, this Six Flags Discovery. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we, we have those. I mean, I'm, I was actually, I, I went to when before Six Flags bought it, and it was Marine World Africa USA. I used to go mm -hmm. a lot when I was a kid because I grew mm -hmm. up in the Bay Area. Um, uh, and I've I've actually gone a lot less since it became Discovery Kingdom. Not to say anything wrong with Discovery Kingdom, I just, <laughs> um, it just just the way that it worked out. Uh, but yeah, no, we've got you know we have that. We've got the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, which has some cool mm -hmm. stuff. 
um, yeah, there's plenty of plenty of places, which, you know, but then again, there's also places all over, like, you know, my dream, my, I was, I was thinking I'm going to go ahead and put the itinerary together just so I have it one day. Like mm -hmm. I want to build like a road trip that's going to take me from California across the country and back hitting as many spots back all over as I could, just because it would be so cool to be able to, because there are like for every place that I have been, Mm -hmm. there's a dozen that I've never seen and it would be nice to be able to check those places out and find the cool things and the, the, the hidden attractions or experiences that, you know, are worth checking out as long as people know they're there. What's your uh, dream theme park? Like out of that road trip what would be the most anticipated you know, you'd want. You know, I, well, I think uh, of all the places that I've never been that I'd like to check out, right, especially right now, just because mm -hmm. they've been in the news a little bit, is Dollywood. Oh, yes. Um, what is Dollywood? Well, because Dolly's awesome. Dolly's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, awesome. But I hear it's, I mean, from everybody that I have ever talked to or heard about that has been there, like, it's apparently a quite remarkable experience. Like, it's not, you know, there's no, they're not. They're not taking the, the, the easy way out on anything there. They spend the time, they spend the, the money, and they have a, a nice experience. Um, and I would definitely like to check that out. Yeah, from all the pictures I see, it's uh, I, first of all, I love how it's situated in the mountains, so it's already gorgeous. And then they have all different types of rides from dark rides to family coasters to big coasters, and they have lots of shows. Yeah. And I'm like, it looks like a beautiful place. To be. I'd love to go to Tennessee. Yeah, I would also I'd also like to check out Hershey Park just because in addition oh. to liking theme parks, I also have a terrible sweet tooth. And so I, was, like, I love like, chocolate. Like theme, <laughs> theme park food is one of my favorite. I mean, one of my favorite things. So like mm -hmm. being able to check out all the stuff that they have there as far as the food goes would be awesome. Yeah, and the brand new little like Hershey Village they just built, Hershey Town mm -hmm. looks delicious. Honestly, <laughs> I have to say that's from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee. They're not too far apart, are they? I feel like that's no, bad. not too bad. We cut those, take those out on a weekend right there. there you go. <laughs> so what made you interested in theme parks? Well, you know, I mean, I think um, it was probably the, the, the moment where I sort of made the pivot from just sort of enjoying them to being a little bit more obsessed was probably my first trip to Disney World, which was in my like early 20s, early mid 20s. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'd done Disneyland a few times as a kid and I absolutely loved it. It was great. It was the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are my favorite vacations I had when I was a kid. Um, but when I went to Disney World the first time as an adult, as an adult is when I think you start to notice just how insane the place is. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get that, you notice that attention to detail and those thematic elements that, when you're a kid, you're just into the rides and the characters and the shows yeah. and whatever. Uh, when you look at it with an adult's eye, you see something a little different. Um, and that's, I think, when I was just like, okay, wow, this is actually really cool. Um, and so then, like, yeah, we I did a couple of trips to Disney World in my 20s. We, My wife and I made it down to Disneyland for the first time in a long time. And we left with annual passes that we had for years. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and then we're hitting Disneyland multiple times a year for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And then we had kids. And the irony of that is that when you're childless adults, you can go to Disneyland wherever you want. When you have kids, it's actually harder. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that changed things a bit. And it's harder in the park as well, because, you know, you guys may want to see something, but your kid's like, I want to go see uh, Tiana. I want to go see right. I want to go with Matterhorn and you're like, oh, yeah. oh, I want to go see World of Color. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the one the, the the one upshot of being able, of going to Disneyland so often now is that like I I never feel like I need to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like there's lots of stuff I would love to do, and I'm I will mm -hmm. get to do some of it, but I never feel like I have to do anything. So yeah. like if the kid is gonna lead the show, that's fine. What do you want to yeah. do? Yeah, yeah. Luckily, even so many times without the kids and before they were born, that you're just now you're just like. I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever you want. Exactly. Man. Except when you get to Dolly World, Dollywood, you're like, listen, we're all on my watch. <laughs> that is true. And I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, kid. Dad's here for work. We have to do it this way. <laughs> yeah. If we don't do this, dad will get fired. So come on. 
<laughs> that'd be a great see that's a great excuse i'm gonna pretend i'm a journalist when i have kids i'm like look i'm, I'm working hey man no this is your this, your, this, 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 this is your channel man theme parks yeah. work yeah yeah or else we won't be able to live in this house with it. <laughs> it's a business expense Man, so I see on your on your Twitter bio you said you're a Disney historian. How much of a historian are you? I, I think I call myself an amateur Disney historian. <laughs> um, you know, I just I I I I'm just a guy who got in has gotten into the history of it. Mm -hmm. Um, just, again, because I think that was an area when when I started writing for Cinema Blends, even before we got into theme parks, like that was an area that I discovered. I just had a lot of knowledge about that. Some of the, a lot of the other writers didn't have. So whenever mm -hmm. those stories came along that I, they got thrown at me. Mm -hmm. um, but I just find, I mean, you know, the Disney company overall, even outside of theme parks, you know, almost a hundred years old now, there's a lot of history there and a lot of it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, so I just, um, you know, and so I've, I, I, I write a lot of features about Disney history, specifically regarding theme parks and things like all mm -hmm. when if an anniversary of some old, old closed down attraction comes along. But I think it's an interesting story. I'll write a piece about it, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's just I just find it interesting. I, I find myself reading, you know, as many books as I can get my hands on on Disney history because there's a dozen different perspectives on everything that has ever happened mm -hmm. and so uh get just you know learning not just what happened but everybody's different take on what happened is really interesting and gives you a, i think a very well-rounded view of of the parks or the company or the movies uh and it's, so it's just kind of fun stuff nice and what um, do you, as an ask, do you follow you know, the, those online forums and blogs? Like, I follow the online, like WDW Magic. They have forums everyone's talking. Do you ever look at those for any type of uh, history or rumors or just see what's going on? Um, I, I will certainly check them out. I mean, sometimes that's where, like, a you know, news story that I am going to write comes mm -hmm. from. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll come across something and be like, because sometimes you get rumors through those sites and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And rumors can be tough because you're like, how you know how how legit is this rumor? Is this <laughs> like, is this like is this person reliable? Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely I don't I'm not a forum person. I don't I don't have accounts on those sites, but I I do certainly do check them out and and you know and yeah and follow various blogs. I mean, I've met I've met a number of the writers who work at those sites doing different events and whatnot. So I follow those sites, if nothing, if only because I am following the people that I've met that I think are cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what blog? Yeah, no, I mean, we're all, you know, and I'm, it's, you know, I'm, I'm still a very small part of that world, but it is, but I am becoming part of that world. So keeping up on what everybody else is doing too. Now, what blog sites do you follow? Um, I, well, I mean, I, you know, I check out all of them daily just to see what again just to see what they're what they're writing about because you know if one of them has a breaking piece of news that might be something i want to write about so um i mean i think blog mickey is probably the first thing i check out in the morning mm -hmm. um i i check out laughing place because i know i know one of the guys who writes there pretty well i've gotten to know him over the years um mm -hmm. but i'll also check out i mean hopefully I'll, I'll check out the other guys too just to see what's see what's going on in the world mm -hmm. You check out a uh, mice chat. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, occasionally. Because uh, yeah, the Dusty say she's a cool guy. I'm, I met him a couple of times. He's a nice one. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I have. But yeah, <laughs> for everybody that I have met, there's a dozen more that I have not. <laughs> yeah, you know? or like you know, or it's like I might follow them on Twitter, mm -hmm. even though I don't know them. Yeah, you know, hey, that's how connections are made. Absolutely. Man. So, what is your favorite theme park? Ever. Ooh, favorite theme park as in like single individual park that's top um individual park oh, ah. start off with resort what's your favorite resort well okay if we're just, if we're gonna go resort then it's then it's disneyland um and yeah, now favorite park. you know that's that's always i mean that's always been my that's been my go-to and and it always is i mean i think there's a and i think it's kind of everything you know disney world is massive 
it's huge it has so much more but like because it has so much more it's just like it's it's almost too big sometimes mm -hmm. like there's you can only do so much in a reasonable amount of time um and i like the way disneyland is a little bit more compact and easy to navigate and you got the you got two parks and they're within yards of each other and yeah, you can walk back the, you know downtown disney and the hotels and everything is close by and it's it's easy to get to mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean you know, having said that, I mean, like, you know, it depends on what I what I want to do. I mean, you know, Disneyland as a single park is probably the best of everything um, in a in a single park. Mm -hmm. um, but I love California Adventure. I love the way that you know, I, it's it's a little bit more of a laid back place, and but that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love you know I love Epcot. Uh, I love just kind of you know you know. I love the I love the World Showcase at Epcot, and not just drinking around the world, but eating around. The world. <laughs> As I said earlier, I love theme park food, so mm. like there's some that's where the really you know, especially like with all the different festivals and all the different booths that they always have, there's mm. always good stuff there I want to check out. You know, if I want to go do rides, then Epcot's not the park I'm going to rush off to. Mm. Uh, but I love Epcot for what it is, and I, that's what I think. Like Disney, you know, that's, and like Islands of Adventure is becoming an amazing place now. With I think two of the best, you know, the you know two of the best roller coasters in Florida are in one park at Universal. And that's mm. amazing. Um, it's I mean every every each one is so different in some way or another that I like each one has something worth checking out which is why I think that makes it hard to pick one it just it depends yeah. on what mood I'm going to be in on a certain day what kind what kind of park I'd like to be in yeah that makes actually total perfect sense because yeah each one like in Epcot festival parks so if you want a certain festival flower and garden you def definitely go ahead over there California Adventure same thing yeah. But um, speaking of Universal Orlando, that's my bucket list resort. I've never been, I've been to Disney World, but I haven't been to Universal Orlando only because when I went to Disney World, I didn't know Universal Orlando existed because I was like seven. But <laughs> that one existed. I cannot wait to get back to Orlando and go to both, hopefully for Guardians of the Galaxy this summer. But yeah, Universal Orlando, love that. Love that place from pictures. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah, no, I'd actually, yeah, I'd actually never been myself until last year. Oh, um, how was it? Kind of, it's, um, I, well, you know, like my trips to Disney World, either, like I said, like I, I made a couple of trips when I was, uh, you know, decades ago, and it just, it didn't fit in the itinerary. Mm -hmm. My other trips to Disney World more recently have all been like work related. So it's, it's just been like go in, do work, leave. Um, so we planned a trip. Uh, we 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 planned our own work trip last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Myself and and a co and one of my coworkers spent a week in Orlando, and we did some time at Disney World and some time at Universal. Mm -hmm. And I just I fell in love with that park, uh, with both parks, um, for a lot of the same reasons that I like Disneyland. You know, the mm -hmm. fact that the two parks are close together, they're easy mm -hmm. to navigate. The City Walk is there. Anything you want to do is fairly close by. There's lots of cool rides and good things, fun things to do. Um, and yeah, like, I mean, I think there's a lot at, at Universal that is absolutely like, you got to check it out. I, you know, I would tell, I would tell anybody that is planning an Orlando vacation to Disney World, like, take an extra day or two and, mm -hmm. and hit Universal because it's absolutely worth doing. Yeah, from a lot of the people that I know that go to Disney World, it seems like more and more people are doing that. They see, as they say, they see more and more um, Harry Potter and Universal bags coming to the Disney uh, Disney hotels. Up so seems like more people are checking out Universal. Thank goodness, because especially with Epic Universe, I know you can go back out there for that. I'm I'm looking forward to that one. That's, That's going to be, you know, I mean, an, an entirely new park, like a 21st yeah. century theme park. I don't mm -hmm. even. What's that even going to look like? I can't it's wait. Gonna be it. epic. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, man. And speaking of epic, an epic universe, what are your favorite upcoming attractions for? It doesn't have to be this year or next year, but just in the anywhere now, all the way up to whatever is coming. 
Oh man, so many choices. Um, well, I mean, I guess, I guess if we're if we're if we're leaving the door open to anything that is upcoming, since we have no idea when we will actually see it, <laughs> I need to do that Tron coaster. Like, oh, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe you know, but you know, it'll, it'll get here eventually. And when it does, <laughs> I will be there. I cannot like everything about like from the first time I saw the Shanghai version, it was mm -hmm. like, okay, can I get to China to do this ride? Because I'll go. Um, unfortunately, the one I've actually been to China, I've actually been to Shanghai, but it was years before Shanghai Disney was built. Oh, so no. it out. Um, but everything about that coaster just looks it's is is totally my jam. Uh, I love Tron. I love, you know, I love fast, like coasters, like, you know, that's my, the thing I love about coasters is the speed. Mm -hmm. I can take or leave the loops and the twists and all that. Like mm -hmm. if they're there, that's great. And if that's, if they're not, that's fine. Give me the speed. Um, and so that part, I love, uh, you know, I love the ride system. Like, you know, when I, when I did Hagrid's, when I went to Universal last year, like, mm -hmm you know, being on the motorcycle thing, like mm -hmm. that was that aspect of it was super cool. So like everything about the Tron coaster is my jam. It's like, hurry up guys, get it done, please. I need to ride this. Motorbike or sidecar? Which one would do better? Oh, uh, oh the motorbike. <laughs> motorbike. I bet, yeah. And yeah, Tron is a motorbike. So make exactly. So yeah, that. that's that's <laughs> the one that I'm, I'm definitely like, all right, let's get this done. Um, but I mean, at this point, like the Guardians coaster is sounding really cool. Mm -hmm. Just a, a unique ride system there that I want to check out. Um, I, I want to know more about what they're what this what's going on with the Moana attraction that they're building. Like we know that it's I guess it's still happening, although we haven't heard much about it. Mm -hmm. But even when they were talking about it, they've never really described what it is. Yeah, um, like and a, so I'm curious. Like I, that one, I just want to know more about. Like I want to experience it because I don't know really what it is, and it like sounds interesting based on what they've said, but it's not a lot. Yeah, they have. Uh, it sounds like a. Hmm, I'd say not even a walk. I feel like an interactive fountain. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it sounds like it's some sort of a walkthrough thing mm -hmm. with interactive elements. Um, but what that means or what that looks yeah, like more, more functionally. Yeah. I have no idea. I do know they pulled a permit for it, so it is happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, and well, yeah. unlike the unlike the other stuff that yeah. know, that, that they announced that we have apparently lost. Maybe <laughs> forever, maybe not. I, uh, yeah, I was looking for that massive festival center. It looks pretty looks kind of interesting. Nice little landmark, but I guess they got chopped off. Yeah. But yeah, Tron, Tron, I was just like you. I was like, when I saw Shanghai, Tron, I was like, wow, this thing, especially at night, I was like, this looks gorgeous. Yeah. Can't wait for it to come here if it ever does, and then it's here. But then they announced it, and it's taking so long to open, my interest is just kind of falling down. I'm still very interested, but the Guardians coasters to me sounds super exciting because I love indoor coasters and the backwards launch. And then also because I know nothing about it. You know, you know, I, we know about Tron because we've seen it, but we don't know anything about this Guardians coaster. So it's really piquing my interest. I can't, and it actually is an opening season. So that's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that we will actually see that one within the next 12 months uh, <laughs> is a big point in its favor. No. Yeah. Favor. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. So I'm like super curious to see that one because it also looks massive. Um, You probably haven't been to Epcot when it was under construction, but. I was going to ask you, how big does that show building look in person? Because oh, it's massive. And oh, it's, oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was there last spring, it was even then, it was like, like, you can't, it's, it's, it's just, it is, it's just huge. Like, wow. And the fact that all of it is filled with a twisting coaster, super cool. I hope there's um, not too many screens, but, you know, I get it, it's space, so. No, yeah, calls for screens, <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna put some rocket and at least I think they have a rocket animatronic or something in the in the queue, right? Because that would be pretty dope. Yeah, um, you know, they did they did that permission breakout, so it wouldn't wouldn't shock me if we see something similar in this one. Yeah, so let's see, but so yeah, my anticipation anticipated attractions that um, 
Super Nintendo World. I can't wait for that one. Um, and huh. well, Epic Universe because that's a whole new theme park yeah. as well. So those and we'll by 2025. Hopefully, hopefully Tron will be open before Epic Universe is finished. <laughs> hopefully, if it opens in 2026, no. You might as well scrap it and ex- I mean, at least they, they should owe us a longer version because Tron is kind of short. They should owe us a longer version of Tron since taking so long. I can get behind that. Like, especially because there's so much land in that particular area. I don't know why they can just, we can make it go inside and out, you know, like a uh, Madhorn situation go in and out, in and out, in and out, so you can poke it out of the building real quick and then pop back into the grid. Because it's taken so long for that thing to open. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of a running joke. Even Universal's Orlando's Twitter account was joking about it, which I thought was hilarious. Man. And an upcoming attraction that everyone's not too excited about is the Star Cruiser. What do you think on this galactic $6,000 minimum Star Cruiser? You know, I, I mean, I think it's probably going to be... I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I think it's probably going to make a lot of money. Um, so I, I, so I don't expect that anybody's issues with it are going to be, are going to end up being big deals because mm-hmm. I think it's going to make giant piles of cash. <laughs> um, I mean, as far as what it is, I, I mean, yeah, like it's, I, 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 I'm, I try to, generally speaking, in most things, I try to give the benefit of the doubt until I experience things personally. I try not to badmouth much of anything. And, you know, it's like if I experience it and I don't like it, I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. But until I do, I, I try to be a little bit more even handed with things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of where I am with Star Cruiser. Like if and when I have enough money to afford to do it, I will do it. And then I'll tell you what I think. Um, I think a lot of it, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that it's probably difficult to show in a commercial, you know, any sort of a video, what this experience is going to be like. Um, and so I, and so I think that's part of the, the, the disconnect that people are having. Um, and I don't think you can probably show what this experience is going to be because it's the kind of thing that to my knowledge has never happened before. You know, we're doing this sort of immersive thematic cruise ship experience inside of a hotel. Um, it's just, it's a bunch of, I mean, it makes, it makes sense to, when you kind of look at it and go, okay, yeah, that, that's a thing that should work. But what does that mean? We don't know yet. Um, at the same time, because it's something that hasn't really happened before, I'm sure there's going to be issues. I'm sure there will be bugs and glitches. I'm sure there will be stuff that ends up not working as well as they thought it might work mm-hmm. um, because they don't know yet because they've never done it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that stuff will get patched over and fixed and replaced. And, um, you know, so I think, you know, yeah, like, I mean, you know, in March when we start, when people start doing this and we start getting people's responses to it, mm-hmm. um, I think you'll pro- it'll probably run the gambit. You know, there'll be some people who are going to say, this was the coolest, the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, my God. And other people who were like, that, this is it. I spent yeah. that um, You know, but I think that'll probably evolve over time. Um, you know, and I and so I I'm I'm excited for what it can be because mm-hmm. uh, I think the idea has merit. Um, <clears throat> I am, you know, it will not shock me if it is not perfect out of the gate, uh, mm-hmm. just because it's such a new idea, it's gonna have so many moving parts um, and not all of them will work just because, you know, it's like, I can I can totally see somebody in Imagineering thinking, hey, I have this great idea, we'll do this thing and then people will do this thing and then it'll all work out, it'll be really cool. And then when the rubber hits the road and people actually show up, something doesn't function right and mm-hmm. it just doesn't end up working the way that Imagineering thought it might. And that's okay. Like when it's, you know, this is, you know, we're, we're, we're at, you're going to be asking people to be involved in this. Yeah. Um, and when that happens, things are going to go weird. Mm. Um, so it's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. You know, I mean, and I think the, the question, the big question for me, ultimately, once bugs and things are ironed out is, mm. you know, sort of how involved does the guest need to be 
to get their money's worth out of the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people are going to want to throw on the Jedi robes and play and basically LARP and play a character and get involved. And other people are just going to want to have dinner and let the experience kind of happen around them. Mm -hmm. um, and if they can make it work so that both of those people feel like they got their money's worth, that's, I mean, that's the goal. That's the win. That has to be what they're shooting for. But I feel like that is going to be hard to do. Um, and I think that's the, that's the main challenge. And that's where I think, you know, that they will, they will meet with success or failure or more than likely some of both. If you get a chance to go on the uh, inv invited on the press uh, tour, would you go? Are you gonna go? I, I, I absolutely. If I got invited to a press event for that, I would. I will be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> no question. If you do, uh, yeah, no. I, I mean, it's, 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 it is possible. I may have already made sure that the PR people that I know are aware that if they invite me, I will go. <laughs> um, which doesn't mean at all that they will call me. Um, yeah, I get I get invited this I get invited to some stuff and not others and I have no idea how that works. That's another weird black box. Um, but yeah, no, I will. I, yeah, if there's, a, if there's a media event that I get to go to for that. I will absolutely do it. If there isn't a media event and I don't get to go, you know, at some point I will probably seri I will seriously look at just going and spending the money um, mm -hmm. if I can swing it. Um, but when that might happen, I have no idea. That's probably not <laughs> something I'm going to be able to do this year. That's going to be like, let me save up and, and put that together and find six friends to go with me so we can share the cost of a room. <laughs> um, you know, that's going to be what that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> what media events have you gone to? Or what's been your um, favorite media event you've done? Um, I've done, let's see. Well, I mean, I did, uh, I did press events for the opening of both Galaxy's Edge and Avengers Campus. Oh, Galaxy's nice. Edge Disneyland and Avengers Campus. Um, I did get to go to those, um, which was, those were both very cool. Um, I've done smaller ones. I, and I went down, uh, uh, we've, we've gotten invited to, like we did, we did media events for Halloween Horror Nights at Universal both in Orlando and Hollywood. I didn't go to either of those. I sent other people because um, uh, you know, like I have a guy and our, our TV editor lives in New Orleans. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's a lot closer and he's also a much bigger horror guy than I am. So it was like, that's your deal. You go do that. And then, mm -hmm. like, like I said, we have people in Southern California. So I sent, I sent another of our writers to the one in, in California. Um, so we got invited to those recently. Um, I went down and did a, a, a small media event for the new spa they opened in the Grand Californian. Most um, yeah, that, one, that was just like recently, right? Yeah, just in September. Um, and uh, I, I mean, that was mostly just an excuse because I wanted to get back to the parks. And I was, <laughs> like, I was like, oh, you'll invite me to that media event? Sure, I'll come down. Like, I just want to go back to Disneyland because it's been a while. Um, perfect, perfect. Dress. Although, no, the, well, the... The big media event, and technically this wasn't a theme park event, it was actually from the from the film studio, but it was at Disneyland, was I did the press junket for the Jungle Cruise movie. Um, wow, and I no, I there is I, I got to interview The Rock and Emily Blunt Ooh, at Disneyland wow. on my birthday. Oh what no um way. which like that was I mean, talk about bucket lists, like that one checked off like several bucket list items in one go. <laughs> that, was uh, that was the biggest the, the biggest thing that was you know that was i think yeah the, i mean definitely the most famous people i have ever interviewed especially in person mm -hmm. especially these days because in the last couple of years most of the interviews i do have been over zoom mm -hmm. um but so that one i got to actually interview uh you know the most the most famous people i have ever interviewed in person at disneyland it was it was pretty cool yeah that's that's actually very cool did you i hope you saw the jungle cruise yeah yeah they uh <laughs> no i i was not invited to the premiere event they did at disneyland the night before i watched it at home like they sent me a screener to watch the movie mm -hmm. before i did the interviews um so i was a little bummed i didn't get invited to that but, <laughs> but uh but i i did see the, i did see the movie beforehand uh, and uh i really enjoyed it i thought it was great yes a couple times it was very nice 
Um, that's, that's a really cool bucket list item you have to achieve. And that's like still really impressive. Um, see. So what are your thoughts? I hope you get to the press tour of Super Nintendo World. You know, that, uh, I'm, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been a gamer since I was a kid, you know, since my, I mean, well, since before Nintendo, actually, that's how old I am. But, uh, but, you know, I've always been a, a serious Nintendo fan. So that's, that's really cool. Um, I'm definitely interested to kind of see the one in California. I'm interested to see how, you know, how it differs from the one in Orlando when that eventually gets built with Epic Universe. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's, I mean, I mean, I think that, you know, second, second only to Harry Potter and ultimately and at the end of the day, maybe even not second to Harry Potter. That's a huge get for Universal mm -hmm. that deal together with Nintendo. Um, and I'm excited, I'm excited to see kind of where it goes, uh, you know, cause yeah, like walking into, you know, the mushroom kingdom, like that sounds awesome. Like, yeah. Check that out. So Bowser's castle, like ooh, Mario Kart. It's like everyone's dream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that one. I'm, I am definitely excited to, to check all that out. Like, man, I will be there on definitely day one. Yeah. Like hopefully. Just and then like. I just had this thought, but like, like universal, like Universal Hollywood, like, mm -hmm. like Nintendo Land during Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. Like, turn it oh. into like, turn it into like the Ghost Mansion or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, like I just had this thought. I'm like, oh wait, that would be awesome. Yeah, and have projection, like three D projection mapping of the ghosts moving around. Like, yeah, yeah, like that would be super sweet. Like, I was super stoked to see like Avengers Campus get, you know made part of uh the halloween stuff at, at california adventure mm -hmm. and i really hope like in the in the coming years they do more of that like just have like the uh, do the have the marvel villains just take the place over mm -hmm. the halloween party like there's some there's some real fun stuff you can do with that such as yes there's so many as so yeah loki agatha kang everybody yeah and then Awesome that Universal finally opened up the uh, what Harry uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter for Horror Nights. That was nice. That was a nice little treat to walk through uh, last year, which was pretty cool. Very cool, man. And speaking of Universal, what would your additions to Universal Studios Hollywood be if you were lead of Universal Creative? Additions to Universal Hollywood. Dude, that's tough. Cause like, I mean, there's nothing like you, like you could, I'm like, I'm honestly shocked that they're even building Super Nintendo world in there. <laughs> like, like you have the space to build anything new in there. <laughs> oh, God, that's a, I mean, that's tough. Um, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, wow. I don't know. Like, I mean, Universal is so, is so massive mm -hmm. um, just as far as like, the stuff that they could add. I mean, even even if you just look at various properties that Universal owns, I mean, mm. there's so much stuff. And then you look at the potential deals they could make with other 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 brands. I don't know. I mean, I I kind of like Universal Hollywood the way that it is. Other than, I mean, even I would I'd love to see a real Fast and Furious attraction in one of the Universal. <laughs> That'd be that work for a nice racing coaster. Yeah, yeah. Like that's like I'm I'm a little like I can understand I fast and well, I mean like okay, you decided to make a fast and furious part of the tram tour at Hollywood. Okay, great. Makes sense, mm -hmm. like to a certain extent. And the way that they made it work mm -hmm. makes sense. Like it, it I mean it's a tram, it is what it is. The fact that they just ported that over to Orlando. I am in his own boggles. <laughs> like what? Really? I come on, guys. Come on. You're bet, dude. Like you guys just built the Velocicoaster. coaster. You're better than this. <laughs> no, um, <I'm> just... <laughs> I I just like man. I <laughs> it's so weird. It's, like, it's so fast and furious. Come on, guys. Do do something. 
because even like even you know it's part of the tram to were here you know it's only about like 10 minutes about a 45 minute thing so it's like yeah, yeah it's like whatever and it's not the way yeah. it doesn't really ruin the other it's not like they took away you know the earthquake segment for traffic right it's built something new on a plot of land you know and it took away an arguably other fast and furious segment by that by the picture cars that people didn't really like too much anyway i don't think yeah so kind of worked out but yeah that uh universal orlando they continue to take away they plop out the tram little individual segments of the tram and make it their own rise well, i mean but even but even like kong but, at universal at, in cool. orlando has has more to it like they did mm -hmm. some stuff with it to make it suspended to make it, to make really it more cool. Um, and so, I mean, I think like Kong is fine the way it is. And I like um, Jaws. Jaws looks really cool too. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, like I think that that's fine as a, as a standalone attraction in, in Orlando. Um, yeah. Supercharged, not so much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me get the commercial. <laughs> They're awfully nice to me. <laughs> oh man so what would your dream additions to the disneyland resort be like what would your disneyland forward be oh god oh that's even harder um <laughs> i don't know i don't know what do we what should we add um no i think um i i think the and and this is not my original idea. It was something I saw on Twitter, but I loved it. Was um, we, uh, we we need a uh, we need an Encanto attraction. Yes. And what we do, the way we do that is we take like Mystic Manor or oh, yeah, that's what one I of the, you know we do you know one of the the more recent Haunted Mansion version, yeah. and we just we transform yeah. that into the house in Encanto. And so we do it, you know, essentially as a, like, I mean, it's sort of a second Haunted Mansion attraction, but it's using much newer technology and, and you can do some really cool, fun stuff with it. Um, I've seen that idea thrown around and I, I like that as a, as a new idea for. Yeah, for, I made a whole, uh, made a whole video on that idea. That's a pretty, that was a pretty cool idea. I like that idea. I hope Disney's listening. You know, people with Disney tell them, tell Chase Beck. <laughs> I don't know. He, I, I, I don't know him. Never met him. <laughs> Dude, I would want. Let's see that, but also like hmm, a Wakanda land, Wakanda, Wakanda area would be pretty cool. But I know with Avengers Campus there. I yeah. Know work. Well, I mean, I think you know the. I mean that 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 Quinjet e ticket ride that. As far as I know, we're still supposed to get at some point. You know, is supposed maybe it'll open. Yeah. Maybe it'll open before Tron. Maybe you know, <laughs> that was there's supposed to be a big Wakanda element in that, um, based on the way it was described. So yeah, I mean, I that, that looks like you're in Wakanda. Yeah, I mean, and we do need that ride. Like as far as oh, you know, things I would add to the Disneyland Resort, I would get that thing done. That yeah, ride needs to happen. Yeah. I love Avengers Campus. Um, you know, I love what Avengers Campus is, mm -hmm. but it is certainly not done. <laughs> yeah, so tiny, so teeny tiny. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of some since the Frozen show was canceled. Someone, uh, a lot of people thrown out putting like a Marvel like Avengers stunt show in there, and I like it. I'm so so cool to see like, uh, what should we call it? Captain America flying above you, or the Falcon with his wings flying above you in that massive stage. That'd be pretty cool. That would be cool. Not just since it's so empty. And let's see. Speaking on adding things, Bob Chapek, a lot of people, a lot of Disney Parks fans don't like him. Wall Street likes him, though. You're going to make me do that, huh? You're going to make me do that. What are your thoughts on Bob Chapek? <laughs> I, I, I have, I have as few thoughts of Bond Bob Chapek as I can, as I can handle. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, Wall Street loves, you know, at the end of the day, Disney's a company, it's a publicly traded company and, and the dollars are what make the decisions. And as long as that keeps happening, then everyone is going to be more than happy with what Bob is doing. Um, I mean, can I nitpick? Sure. Um, at the same time, 
like I don't my my biggest frustration is the way that for whatever reason yeah like there's a, a segment of the fandom that has just decided that Bob is the worst <laughs> um, and he like when he was the head of Disney Parks everything that was bad was because he was the head of Disney Parks and now he's the CEO and there's a different guy in charge of Disney Parks and everything that's bad is Bob's fault still <laughs> um and 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 I like and you can't have you can't have it both ways, guys. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm not. I'm like, you, it, we can if you want to blame if you want to blame Bob Chapik for everything that's going that you don't like right now, then you need to have blamed Bob Iger for everything that was bad before. Um, at the same time, like I, I mean, yeah. Like, do I do I wish that that Avengers Campus had opened with the e-ticket attraction that is not even under construction right now? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do. Do I wish that all the cool stuff that they're supposed to be adding to Epcot that is now at best on hold and at worst never going to happen? Do I wish that all that stuff was still happening? Absolutely, I do. I want I want all of it. Um, I want everything. I want it all to be great. I want it all to be done. I want it all to be perfect. I, I want, and I want more than that. And I want them all to be e-ticket rides because they're bigger and badder and more expensive and, and cooler to look at. Mm -hmm. But that's not realistic. That's not mm -hmm. feasible. Um, you know, it's, we can blame the management or we can blame the pandemic or we can just blame the fact that the company went, you know what, we just don't, we just, we just don't want to spend that money. Um, whatever the reasons are, those are the reasons. And that stuff has always happened. Um, I mean, Jesus, Disneyland didn't have water fountains when it opened because mm -hmm. they had to choose between toilets and water fountains. Um, you know, it's like stuff happens. There are external influences that make things, that change the way things happen. There are internal influences that change the way things happen. People in charge get to decide what they're gonna do. Um, but it is what it is um and yeah i mean so i i i try to give i, I certainly give bob chapik the benefit of the doubt now uh mm -hmm. because i do because i do think like he is not i don't believe that he's micromanaging park decisions mm -hmm. um he's got much bigger things on his plate now um and so while i might have given him a hard time a couple of years ago over parks decisions i'm generally not doing that now because i don't think it is him um but even but whoever whoever it is you want to blame i i don't blame them either i it's it's just life it's just the way things work it's the way mm -hmm. companies exist um and it might bum me out that we're not we don't have everything i wish we had uh but it, it's but me complaining about it isn't going to change anything um you know like if if you know if people stop buying genie plus and they haven't stopped yet apparently like more than according to the last earnings call more than a third of people in the parks spent the money on that stuff mm -hmm. like okay so that works so that's not going away <laughs> um you know if if the if the if if the experience changes to the point that it is bad uh then people will stop going and then things will change. The biggest frustration there is that, I mean, I, and this, I will admit, like these things take, you know, these things take time. So it's like, by the time anyone realizes that the Disney parks experience has declined to the point that it's a problem, it will have been going on for years mm -hmm. and it will then take several more years to fix it yeah um, and that will suck like that period will be an absolute nightmare if you're a fan um and i don't look forward to that if we ever actually get there not gonna work. um but uh you know but yeah i mean for the most part like it doesn't i mean part of the reason prices keep going up is because people keep paying them mm -hmm. um i mean it's, i mean they, like disney disneyland knew the annual passes were getting out of control <laughs> um <laughs> like i mean that's why they kept raising the prices on them they were like they wanted people to stop buying them because like annual pass holders were making the park so crowded and driving people crazy and and they knew that was an issue and and that's why like they changed the program and now you can barely even buy annual passes in the parks like yeah you know, it's like we made them and then we changed our minds and now they're sold out um you know they at the end of the day they want 
they want happy customers spend more money. Mm -hmm. They want the customers to be happy. They also want them to spend money as long as they ultimately get those things, you know, we'll get, we'll, we'll get the stuff, you know, and we may not get, you know, the ride that we thought we were going to get when the new ride comes out. Mm -hmm. but, oh, but as long as it's still a good ride, I mean, Rise of the Resistance is amazing. And it took, Beautiful. And it, and it took forever and, it's yes. exp and it was expensive as hell. <laughs> and <laughs> like, but, but it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. Like, you know, it, it, we got there. Not every ride is going to be an e-ticket. That's okay too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, more rides is better, even if they're not the most expensive thing in the world. It'll all work out. Yeah, mm, I agree. That's a very, that's a very in-depth take. Maybe Sorry, I, I really ran off there for a while. Sorry. Oh that. no, no, that was <laughs> great. Maybe when your Twitter followers, Twitter followers watch this, they're like, ah. Oh. Good point. <laughs> Man. And lastly here, what was your favorite, or not lastly, but what's your favorite aspect of a theme park? You know, some people go for the rides, some people go for the show, some people go for the food. I personally like to go for the rides and the shows. Um, I'm not much of a food person, as you can see. <laughs> but, but mostly for me, it's the rides and the shows. But yeah, what's your favorite theme park aspect? You know, I I I am very much there for like the atmosphere and the the atmosphere and the food. I guess are are for maybe my kind of two top deals. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, certainly. I mean, I, I I mean, I love the rides. Like they're great, and I will always do as many of them as I can on any trip. Um, and you know, like when I go to some park I've never been to, then like I mean, part of my goal is to do as many rides as I can if I've never done the ride before um but when it comes to like a disney park or a universal park where i have been there a few times um then for me it's it's just about kind of the atmosphere mm -hmm. the, you know like i love just i love just being in the parks i love like it's a it's it's a very calming feeling for me it's like it's it's very zen <laughs> um yeah. you know like I, I mean i'm sure like 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 most theme park fans like if you go regularly it's like you go and then you get back and then there's some period of time and at the end of that period whether it's days weeks months you're like i gotta get back exactly. i gotta get i gotta get back in that park um and i love and and i totally get there and then when i get to the park it's like oh. <laughs> And I love that feeling. That's one of the things that I like. I go there for now. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, food is a big one for me, just because like I like good food and favorite theme park. Yeah, theme park food. food is always changing. Like there's always something new to mm -hmm. try, especially the um, seasonal stuff. Yeah, like, exactly. It's, it's like yeah, the, whether, like whether it's a new permanent thing or like there's a festival going on and there's special food. It's like all right, let's try that because I, I I'm a I'm a I love good food i'm kind of a food snob like i don't like i don't like theme park food like mm -hmm. that's i mean you know the, the, what, what you would call theme park food i tend yeah. to go for like the, 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 the higher end stuff yeah. like the food and wine festival booths mm -hmm. or like it's you know dinner at carthay circle or napa rose mm -hmm. i never been um, dinner at carthay circle. like i will spend like that's that's where i will spend my money like when it comes to the parks now it's like it's not about like I'm not there for like merch or like the like. Wait, are you on. telling me you don't want to wait uh, seven hours for a popcorn bucket? I, you know, I mean, I have, you know, I have some <laughs> like cool theme park stuff, oh. I have, you know, that I've spent money on. But like this is about, and like this is even most of this isn't even theme park stuff. But like this is it. Like this is what I have. Um, you know, I bought. I've got you know I've got my my lightsaber that I built in Galaxy's Ooh, Edge. Nice. Um, like I, I spent the money on that because I was like, or, and like, and that's was and part of the thing with that, especially at, like, it's an experience thing. It's not just you spend two yeah. hours you get a lightsaber. It's like yeah. there's a show, and that mm -hmm. part of it was really cool. And like I like I I wish I could justify spending that money again because I want to go through through the experience of that again. Mm -hmm. Um, but like yeah, I'm not a big stuff person i try not to be anyway um but that's why yeah i'm like when i if i'm gonna if i'm gonna drop a chunk of money at a theme park it's like i'm gonna buy a nice dinner 
in a restaurant, maybe, you know, maybe one I have not eaten at before. Like mm-hmm. that, that's where I want to, that's where I'm going to spend my money. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I love all of it. It's the culmination of all the different pieces of theme parks mm-hmm. that make it so, that make them unique. Um, so I'm there, I'm there for a little bit of everything, but ultimately, yeah, it's just the atmosphere of it. Mm-hmm. Like and Also, really the, uh, well, yes, it's part of the atmosphere, but the music, you know, most people don't notice how, you know, you go into a place and even if you don't like, like the song, but you hear music and each land and how it changes, it mm-hmm. really like, it's impactful to me because then you go to somewhere like Galaxy's Edge and there's no music, like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but it you know, but it but it really impacts the experience of yeah, you know, you know feeling like you've gone somewhere else. I'll yeah. tell you, I'll tell you, like when when I did that media event for Galaxy's Edge, mm-hmm. um, I had a I I was carrying a backpack, mm-hmm. um, and I had to I had to leave to go catch my flight to go home, mm-hmm. and they had uh, they had cast members at like the entrance to the galaxy's edge because it was the meet the media day that I went to was the day before it opened to the public. Mm-hmm. And so they had cast members there to let the people in who were supposed to be there and make sure that the regular guests didn't come in. And when I saw the table, I pulled my bag off my shoulder and started to open it mm-hmm. because my brain went, Oh, I need to go through security and they're going to need, need to check my bag mm-hmm. because when I first went to galaxy's edge, I felt like I had left Disneyland. Like it, yeah. felt like it felt like such a different experience that when I was walking back into the rest of the park, mm-hmm. like my, I literally, my brain was like, you have to get your bag checked to get into Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I went, wait, no, you're in Disneyland, no moron. Put the backpack on your shoulder. Um, but it was like, that was, that was like, that was oh, the weirdest like, yeah, but yeah. Just, like, I mean, part of that was just, I mean, the, the area wasn't totally empty, but mm-hmm. it was much emptier than it had oh, yeah. since, mm-hmm. um, which probably helped change that, that feeling and make it feel like I was less inside Disneyland, but mm-hmm. it was, it was unique. And also because, you know, probably the cast members were standing there. So it looked like, you know, maybe like security workers. I, yeah, I exactly. And it's like, and the way it's, shaped it yeah it really does take you out like you can't see any other part of disneyland from it so it's like yeah. really its own thing crazy how they did that like perfect use of the railroad and the mountains to just block everything out mm-hmm. man and lastly here since you are cinema blend movies you know the pandemic has really changed the movie business here and Big way. I was show. Uh, I follow them. Lots of. Oh, I watch. I don't know if you watch uh, Grace Randolph from Beyond the Trailer. I watch her for all my movie news. But I saw on one of these on Twitter. I guess uh, Marry Me, the new Universal film, and something. Oh, Death on the Nile both bombed this weekend. And I feel like now those would be qualified as should be like would be like the new streaming movie. You know. Do you think those mid-range movies are kind of out of the theaters for now, or at least day and day releases because you know no one's going to go pay seventeen dollars to watch them? Um, well, I mean, I, I I definitely think I mean we are, we are still in uh, you know I mean we're still in a pandemic to one degree or another, and that is just mm-hmm. that is ultimately what is deciding people, making people make these decisions on what they're going to go see, and and yeah, like I think there's you know it's a, the the question becomes like. You know, are you going to? Do you want to? Do you know? Are you going? Do you? It's not even. Do you want to spend twelve bucks to see the movie? It's do you want to spend twelve bucks to see the movie and then spend two hours wearing your mask in a theater? Yeah. The um, and especially where something like Death on the Nile, which is a great movie, I, I've seen it. Um, like, you know, an Agatha Christie story starring Kenneth Branagh. Like the the target audience for that. Mm-hmm. Is going to be an older audience, yeah. I'm a little and, more and, and, and they're the ones who are, you know, potentially more, you know, uh, you know, more at risk, and and mm-hmm. you're going to be making those decisions a little bit, a little bit more seriously. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think there's, we're, you know, those sorts of movies are going to continue to struggle as long as movies are struggling at all. Um, I mean, I mean, I think ultimately, 
um, you know, theaters are going to survive. Those movies are going to survive. At some point, we will we will get back to something resembling normal. Um, you know, I'm not sure that you know those movies shouldn't have been released streaming instead, mm -hmm. um, because they probably would have been more successful. Um, you know, throw Death of the Nile on Hulu or mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so I mean, I. I you know, we will we will see what how things change permanently. I mean, I ultimately I think I think that we will get back to something resembling normal. The only real change that I think um, you know is permanent is the is that just we're going to start to see you know the the release window has shrunk down to about forty five days in most cases now. Yeah. Um, and so now it's, you know it's like oh you know if you didn't if you don't want to go and that's the which which also I think impacts the box office. Yeah, it's like, oh, the theater this weekend. Mm -hmm. well, don't worry because it's going to be on Hulu in a couple of months. Um, yeah, and that's going to cause people then to not also not you know also not go to the theater. Like, you know, I don't have to wait that long to see it at home, so I'll just wait. Um, you know, and I think that's that'll be the question. I think in a year or two years, uh, you know, are are people still making that determination, even when getting to the theater is easier? Are they still mm -hmm. going to say, you know what, I don't need to see that on the, in the theater because it's going to be on streaming in a month or two? Um, and that I, I don't, I don't really know yet. I don't have a, a, a good determination of, you know, are those mid-tier movies going to going to fall victim to that calculus forever? Um, and they. You know, I hope not. I mean, I mean, ultimately, I do still love theaters. At the same time, like there's issues. You know, there's accessibility issues. You know, if you're a disabled person, then getting to the theater has always been hard. Oh, um, yeah. And I am in favor of making movies more accessible. So, you know, if that means day and date releases where they're hitting streaming and theaters at the same time, fine. I have no issue with that. Yeah, you know, I feel like because now, like Disney is sending that every Pixar film straight to Disney Plus. But yeah, but I guess Disney, they have so many movies. I guess, you know, sending one or two to Disney Plus won't really affect it uh, too much, I guess. The yeah, people. that's, I mean, I think, well, I mean, and, you know, and Encanto has proven that, you know, it's, streaming is huge. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that movie, that movie was, was that, movie, that movie was out for a month in theaters yeah. and it, and nobody noticed and it was only when it hit Disney Plus that it exploded in popularity, um, and Disney has clearly noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, so nice. there's, there is, you know, I still, I, I think, I think Disney too is going to continue to release as much as they can in theaters, mm -hmm. but they will certainly not be afraid of releasing movies straight to streaming if they think that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, thing I actually got noticed because I'm so excited for Encanto. To be the birth of a new franchise, as they called it. I'm there are so many characters to really explore. You oh, saw yeah. It. So, oh yeah, no, I, I I fully expect like the Encanto animated series on Disney Plus will be mm -hmm. announced at D23. I am I have almost zero doubt on that. Like, you know, it'll still be a couple of years away because they're mm -hmm. only just now putting it together. Yeah. <laughs> the movie was huge. Um, but they like it'll get some kind of an announcement. Uh, because I, I, because I agree. I mean, I think with all those characters, with popularity of the movie now and all the characters that are there that you could do something with, I, mm. I absolutely agree that there will be more uh, of Encanto as quickly as they can make it happen. Yeah, and then <laughs> Encanto will be the new Frozen splash in the park, so you'll see it in every parade and every fireworks show. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine with me. I'll take hey man, dude, no. like Lin Manuel Miranda's music is gonna go great in a theme park parade. Oh, it really? Like, is. No like, argument there. I'm surprised he hasn't just written one already for Disney. Just a random one of their random like magic happens. Oh whoever, God. whoever one knows when that will return. But yeah, like that would be pretty cool. That would be that. Oh my, I. That's that would be pretty epic if they if they announced a brand new parade in a park with music by Lin Manuel Miranda, the world would explode. Yeah, like whew, I would buy that would give me a. Oh, oh yeah, I, I will. I will be there. <laughs> I, I will. Like I'm. I'm. I'm wait. I'm wait. I never saw Magic Happens before it. Before you know, in the two weeks it was around. Yeah, before two I'm, weeks. That I'm like 
when they announce that that's coming back, I'm I'm booking my trip because mm -hmm. I want to like it, I heard really I saw that uh saw it twice on the same day. Thank goodness because man, because yeah, think about it. we have the in my opinion the not so great mainstream electrical parade coming back, but as a Disney historian, you may love it. So if you love it. That's fine too. But I like, I'm a Paint the Night fan, and I don't know where it is. I'm very upset. Every time the Main Street Electrical Parade comes and Paint the Night isn't there, I'm very upset. <laughs> and but, then, then the two, I am absolutely, I am also on Team Paint the Night. Uh, like, I will, I will, I will take Main Street Electrical Parade. I love it. It's, it's a classic. I, you know, I will, I'm going to definitely try and make it down when it's, when it's there. But if I was given the choice, I would, I would agree. I would choose Paint the Night. <laughs> I haven't seen that since what 2018, 2019, like that. But very long time. But so I'm just crossing my fingers for that sometime. But at least for magic happens. Let's see. We got Main Street Electro Parade that's probably gonna run this summer. They got the seasonal stuff. So that means magic happens. Earliest return could be like 2023. Not so far for a two four parade only had two weeks to shine. And now we got mothballed for a year. Oh yeah, no, I'm I, I I have to say I I am actually a little bit surprised that that it's still missing in action. I was fully expecting it to to come back uh you know right right around now, honestly. It's like I was like, oh, you know, they'll they'll wait till after the holidays when when traffic and tends to die down in the parks and they'll mm -hmm. they'll want to have something new to try to draw people back in and that'll be the great perfect time to to bring it back. And they didn't do that. I know, like, oh man, I feel bad for all those in the poem perform there because I like really like those costumes. Wow, so glad I got to see it and have have it on video because I don't even know what's coming back. Yeah. Oh, and plus, you know, there's two parks. So why don't you just put Paint the Night in California Adventure and then Magic Happens in Disneyland? Boom, I'm happy. Well, that works. I'm good with that. Like crazy. I'm good with, I'm good with, I'll take any, I'll, you know, one of my favorite things to do back in the day was uh, you get a, you get a, a table outside at the wine country Trattoria at DCA, mm -hmm. right by the, right by the, the wall mm -hmm. when the Pixar play parade goes by mm -hmm. and you get a table, you get a glass of wine, you watch the parade go by, like lovely doing that with like magic happens or paint the night or anything like I will like I will you'll know where to find me when the parade happens because I will have my table. <laughs> that, yeah, that's oh beautiful. That sounds so relaxing. And also, how many times have you seen Spider Man? How many times have I seen have I seen Sp the No Way Home? Yes. I have seen it one time. Wow. I thought you were gonna say like ten. No, no, dude. I have I have kids. I can't go to the movies anymore. <laughs> True. I've only seen it. Uh, no, I I I, I, went to, I, I had to drive to San Francisco to get the press screening. Ah, uh, um, did you get to interview uh, any of the three Spider Men? I, I did not. Some of my some of my coworkers got uh, got that gig. Oh I think that was my I think that was my managing editor, Sean O'Connell, who I will admit. Uh, is a bigger Spider-Man fan than me. He's actually written a book. I'll I'll do a quick plug for my buddy. Uh, I believe later this year he's he's written a book about the history of Spider-Man in film um, uh, with great power. Coming out later this year, free order now on Amazon. There's my there's my there's my plug for my buddy. Um, he's written his that's his second book, but uh, he he is a he is the lead Spider-Man fan. Uh, in the at cinema blend so it made sense for him to do those interviews they they're they were they're, yeah. they're very good about about trying to give us you know when, you we like get, when, when we get those chances they're very nice about trying to give us the ones that we really want that was like when i got to do jungle cruise at disneyland it was mm -hmm. like it was like that's that's a, that's a dirt gig right there <laughs> um, and so uh, and i got so i got to do that which was awesome and so yeah he definitely gets to interview the spider man <laughs> oh i'm sure he must have been like and like shock, probably wide eyed and like best in my life. <laughs> that was I. I mean, I will say because I mean, I was not. I, I was pretty sure they were gonna they were gonna go ahead and do that, like all the rumors were implying. But I was not a hundred percent sure that they were gonna do that. So I, oh. I mean, it was it was cool to be sitting in the theater and be like, so is this gonna happen? Is this gonna happen? Oh, and then, yeah. happened, and then you cheered and screamed <laughs> and shouted and 
jumped up and down. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Man, well, it was great to have you on. Everyone go follow Stephen Dirk Libby. So is your name Stephen or Dirk? My, my given name is Stephen. I go by Dirk, which is a much longer story that we don't need to get into. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, you can find me. Most of my social media handles are Child Dirk, C H I L D E underscore D I R K. Um, I'm mostly on Twitter. You can, I have an Instagram with some that I need to put more pictures on. I don't like, I literally <laughs> like only use Instagram when I'm in the parks. Um, Makes sense. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, come follow me on Twitter, hang out and talk about theme parks. And go read his articles on Cinema, Cinema Blend and all. His other cinema, cinema, I cannot say this word, cinema when <laughs> co star editors with their movie articles learn some great movie news. Absolutely. And subscribe to my channel for theme park updates and become a member because, you know, we have some cool member videos coming. As always, have a fantastic day. Thank you, sir.